All right, let's take a look at another exciting tutorial um, of Blender versus the industry. And today what I want to look at is the navigation shortcuts. Okay, kind of just moving around our scene, just kind of the efficiency of that. So I'll start with Maya, then I'm going to test Blender. I'm going to kind of do similar things. And then at the end, I'll go ahead and kind of let you know which one I think is better. And if you guys have additional comments, please leave it in the comments below different tips and tricks. Um, I know that I might not know all the top secrets here, so just kind of share that with me. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and go into Maya. And in Maya, um, I'm holding down Alt and then Middle Mouse to move like that, Alt Left Mouse to move like that, and Alt Right Mouse to move like this. So I feel like that's just kind of navigational, but um, Let's kind of talk some shortcuts here. So I can, if I'm, if I get away from there, I can press F to frame up on it. And if I had multiple objects in the scene, so if I'll do Control D to duplicate, now if I move this guy over here, and then if I press again F, to, it'll frame selected. If I press A, it'll frame up on all. Okay. Um, also, if I come in here, if I look at this guy, if I press one, it's going to be in um, the actual mode. And if I press three, it's going to be in um, smooth preview. So what that's doing is it's actually previewing if it's going to uh, be smooth. And two is going to kind of be a hybrid of both. So what's cool about this is going to allow you to use your modeling tools. And because um, your modeling tools have to be in the actual geometry. And then in the smooth approximation, it's going to kind of show you what it would look like if it were smooth. So kind of toggling between one and three, that's kind of cool. Also, four is going to be wireframe, five is shaded, six is texture, I don't have any texture on this, and seven is lighting. Okay, I'm going to go back to five. Um, and those are going to work whether you're using the uh, numpad or the normal keys on the top here. Um, go ahead and take this guy off. Um, and then if I press the space bar, I get access to all of this. So I could go here if I press the space bar and hold the space bar and click here. Now I could go to my left view, my right view, my perspective view, my front view, um, you know, top view here. I'll go back to perspective view. And um, okay, so that's kind of cool. Also, if I tap the space bar, it's going to go to my previous window. So if I come here and if I tap the space bar, it's going to bring up this window. And if I tap the space bar again, it's going to bring it to the previous window. So tapping the space bar is going to do one thing, but holding down the space bar is going to do something else. Okay, so that's kind of a look at um, how to do that. Oh, another cool trick, if I go to rotate, um, so by the way, move, scale, and rotate, your shortcuts are going to be W, E, and R. W, E, and R, and those are right next to the each other on the keypad. That's why it's like that. And then also Q is going to be select. Okay, so Q is select. And then I have W, E, and R. And if I go to R for, uh, I'm sorry, E for rotate, then if I'm rotating this, if I hold down J while I rotate, it's going to kind of snap into um, perfect increments. If I let up on J, it's going to be more kind of free form like that. So J is kind of this hidden snapping when you're um, moving on anything. I feel like I could probably hold J here and you can see that it also snaps. Um, if I have the grid on, so if I turn on the grid, if I press X and middle mouse drag, I can see that it'll snap to any grid point here. Okay, so just, I, I feel like some kind of some cool navigations. So again, this is Q and then W, E, R. I also have space bar. If I hold down the space bar and then click in the middle, I can access any of my cameras. And by the way, if I hold down space bar, I, you can see that I can access any of my menus too. I also have these hotbox zones where I can have additional information and I can set up my custom hotboxes. Um, and, and depending on what tool I'm in, I can uh, have special marking menus kind of pop up if I want there to be kind of um, 
the fingers at my tool, you know, at my um, tools at my fingertips there. So kind of looking at Maya here, we can kind of see its navigation. Let's go over to Blender. Okay, so here's Blender. Now, if I want to move this guy, instead of going over here and grabbing the move tool, which I could do, and you can see that I can grab it exactly like Maya, instead I can just select them and I can press G as in grab and I can instantly kind of just start moving them. Okay, I can also do this. Again, instead of grabbing rotate, I can just be over here and press rotate and now I can start rotating them instantly. I can also press S and then scale. Okay, so G for grab, R for rotate, and S for scale. And I'm just going to kind of point out a few things here. So if I press G for grab, now if I, if I want to lock this to an axis, I can press Y, and now you can see that it's locked this way. If I press G, and then if I press X, it's going to be locked this way. If I press G and then X, I'm sorry, uh, Z, it's going to be locked this way. So I can see that if I ever get confused, you can see here it's color coded. So X is going to be red, Y is going to be green, and Z is up and down in blue. So I can also see that here. So if I want to move it in X, now watch this, if I rotate this guy, now I could just select him, hit R for rotate, and I can do the same thing. I could hit X, and you can see that he starts rotating like that. If I wanted to rotate him another way, I could just hit Y, and now I'm rotating him this way. So let's say if I put him at a 45 degree angle. Now, if I press um, G for grab, and then if I did X, I can see that he's moving this way. But if I pressed X again, it's going to be kind of the local X. So we can say that, you know, the movie or the monkey's moving left and right, but he's moving left and right based on his angle that he is, not the angle of the world. So I know that's it is kind of confusing, uh, maybe the first time that you're doing this, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. So again, what I'm doing is I'm pressing G for grab, then X once is going to be for world. X twice is going to be for the local movement, and that's true for all of these. So if I wanted to scale this guy, I could press S for scale, and then if I pressed X, it's going to allow me to scale one way. If I go to, um, if I press S, and then if I press X twice, now I can scale like that. Okay. Another thing with scale that I want to point out is this was a little bit confusing when I started is that if I press S I can see that I get this scale and you can see that it, it seems kind of touchy like I, I just kind of start moving and it's like whoa that's kind of crazy but if I have my cursor way over here and press S now I get kind of this longer runway and you can see that I have kind of more precision so it does matter where your cursor is and let's say if I'm like this and let's say my cursor is way up here to start with and I press S and I want to make it bigger. You're like, well, I don't have a lot of runway because I'm going to run out of room on the top of my screen. If you go like this, you can see that it just kind of keeps looping. And so that's kind of cool. You don't have to worry about your uh, cursor ever running out of screen room. It just kind of like infinitely comes across there. So that's kind of cool. Again, R, I can kind of rotate and move like that. So again, G for grab, R for rotate. S for scale, and then you can press X, Y, or Z after any of those commands to kind of lock it into one of those directions. Um, the other thing is that Blender uses the number pad quite a bit. So if I press 1 on the number pad, I get the front view. If I press uh, 2, 2 is going to kind of rotate around like this. If I just keep pressing 2, I'll press 1 here. And if I press 3, I'm going to go to the side view. If I press 4, it's going to rotate around this way. If I press 5, 5 is going to toggle between orthographic and perspective. 6 is going to rotate around this way. I just keep hitting 6. 7 is going to be my top view. 
8 is going to kind of rotate around this way. And 9 is going to be my three-quarter view. Okay, so it's like if I'm looking at it like this, I can kind of press 9, and it's just going to be my kind of three-quarter view. Um, the other thing, too, is let's say I had multiple characters. So I'm just going to go Control-D. Okay, cool. I got one guy down here, and I'll show you that in a second. So now if I want to isolate select one, okay, well, I can click on this one, and if I click on the slash on the number pad, it's going to isolate selected. If I hit slash again, it's going to unisolate select. If, if I press the period on the number pad, it's going to focus on that. So that's kind of cool. Um, and if I pressed minus on the numpad, it's going to go back like that. Plus on the numpad, it's going to go like this. Um, if I press home, it's going to show everything in the scene. If I press, um, if and, and also what I could do is I could go like this. I could press the tilde key, and now I get this kind of this marking menu, kind of similar to Maya, that pops up, and I can go to any of these. So I could go to my right view, and then I could just press tilde, and then I could go to the top view, bottom view. Uh, here's perspective view. Um, just, you know, view camera, that'd be my render view. Um, any of these views, if I just hit the middle mouse and start moving, I'm back to just kind of my perspective window here. Um, and the, a few other things here is that, let's say if I wanted to view uh, shading, if I press Z, I, get, I can look at the rendered view, the wireframe, or the material preview, or solid, okay? Or I could do Alt, Z, Alt Z is going to be the toggle between um, shaded and X-ray, and you can see that this is my X-ray button up here. I can also do this. I can do Shift Z, and that's going to be my toggle between wireframe and shaded. You can see that I also have that here, wireframe and shaded. And uh, Shift Alt Z is going to hide and show the grid. Okay. So, also, if I want to create a new shape, I'm going to do Shift-A is going to add a new object into the scene. And you have to be kind of aware of um, what mode you're in because if I'm, in, if I'm in edit mode, so if I hit Tab to enter edit mode, now if I do Shift-A, I'm going to actually be appending it to the existing object. So if I create like a, a circle or something, it's not going to be considered a new shape. It's just going to be part of this shape. Um, but if I create a new shape, so if I go Shift A, now I have the longer menu. Now it's going to be actually a new shape that I'm introducing into my scene. Okay, and that, that's going to make a difference kind of how you're modeling. And I should also point out a few things here. That if I go to my preferences, if you don't have a number pad, let's say you're on a laptop or something that doesn't have a number pad, you can have your keyboard emulate the number pad. Okay, so you can do that here. You can see that I'm under inputs here. The other thing is that when you're in sculpting mode, when you're in sculpting mode, um, we don't want the middle mouse to move, or, to move around. Usually we're with a tablet or something like that. So what you can do is if you go in here to preferences, you can tell your mouse to emulate a three button mouse. Now you can hold down Alt and you kind of have more um, um, Maya S controls. I can do uh, um, Shift and click around, or I can do Alt and kind of move around. And that's going to be better for um, tablets. The only thing that if you have it in emulate three button mouse mode, you're going to some of your hotkeys aren't going to work. You have to realize that it is in that. So I feel like if I'm doing sculpting, I like to have it in emulate through button mouse mode. If I'm not in sculpting, I'm going to kind of turn that off. Okay. And I feel like I would recommend getting a, a number pad just because Blender is going to be using a number pad quite a bit here. Um, I think that... Um, so let, let's kind of talk about this. So Maya versus Blender on navigational stuff. I feel like to kind of remember things, I think that Maya is a little bit easier. I feel like it's um, just kind of more straightforward and it can't 
have it doesn't have the fastest keys. I feel like the hot box to me still feels a little clunky. It's got so many menus. It's yeah, you can customize it and make it smaller, but it just seems I don't know, a little archaic. I feel like it's a little bit cleaner on Blender's side. I think Blender's can be a little frustrating when you get started, but I think if you stick in Blender, uh, get used to it, I think actually Blender will be quicker. So I'm gonna give my thumbs up to Blender on the navigation side of things. Um, again, stick with it, kind of practice these shortcuts, and I think that you'll have a happy workflow once you get going. All right, make sure to like and subscribe. And also put in the comments if I miss something, if you find a cool trick that you like, um, let me know and I'm happy to try it and maybe I'll make a video on that. All right, thanks guys.